Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You may be seated if you are if 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 you are a Christian, if you are born again, Easter is critical to your faith because the fact that Jesus Christ rose from the dead is the cornerstone of our faith as Christians. It says to us that because Christ rose from the dead, and as he was, so are we in this world, it means that when we die, we will rise again. And actually, the Bible says that we don't die as believers. It says that we sleep. We sleep in the Lord. And we wake up on the other side of eternity, alive and whole, just as the Lord Jesus Christ did. So we just want to appreciate God today and to bless him for the awesome, wonderful blessing of Easter. And during our prayer time, we said it all. We thanked God because this time last year, who would have thought that we will all still be standing? I know that in many homes and many families, people have lost loved ones. Uh, people have been very, very ill. But we want to thank God in this church in Living Spring because God has been wonderful to us. And um, we just want to bless his name for every family um, and everyone, wherever you may be. Even for those who have lost loved ones, those who have suffered during the pandemic, we want to assure you that if your loved ones died in Christ, they did not die, they slept. And because of Resurrection Day, because of Easter, they, you will see them again, if you also remain in the faith. And that is why it is critical that we all give our lives to Jesus and we tell everyone about Jesus so that they can give their lives to Jesus too, so that at the end of time, because our times are different, some people go early, some people go later, but we will all go, so that any time we go, we have that assurance that we are only separated for a short time because one day soon, like Christ rose on Easter, Sunday, Easter morning, we also will rise from the dead. So again, we give God all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, and all the adoration for the awesome, mighty things that he has been doing for us. And the sermon for today is, are you young? Are you young to our teenagers, to our young adults, and even to the older ones like myself who are young at heart? Are you young if you are? Who said grandma? Who said grandma? If you are young, then turn the world. Somebody said in Acts, he said, these young men and these people have turned the world upside down, talking about the disciples of the Lord Jesus. He said they have turned the world upside down. And because of that, they were mad at them. But in actual fact, what the disciples of Jesus did after Jesus resurrected and went back to heaven was they turned the world right side up. My challenge to every young person today is it's your turn to turn the world the right side up. It's resurrection morning. We are told that on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was dark. She was there while it was dark. And when she got there, she found that somebody had rolled the, to the stone away from the tomb. She ran. I want you to say, she ran. She ran. She ran, she ran back to all the other disciples to let them know what had happened. Run with speed. The gospel that the Lord Jesus has committed to our hands is the gospel that we must now run with. We must run, not just leisurely, but we must run with speed. 1 Samuel 21 verse 8 tells us that the king's business requires haste. The king's business requires haste. You cannot afford to procrastinate with the work of God. You 
cannot afford to take the word of God lightly. You cannot afford to hold back on preaching the gospel of Jesus because the king's business requires haste. Mary ran. She ran. She, when she got to the tomb on Easter day and found that, there was, that the stone had been ro rolled away, she ran. She ran. It brings me back to the message. If you go through the scripture, you will find that the disciples of Jesus were young. They were young adults. Jesus himself was just 30 when he started his ministry. In fact, the first time we see Jesus ministering, he was age 12. So to all of you middle schoolers, you can start early too. At age 12, Jesus was sitting in the, in the synagogue with leaders, teachers, discussing intelligently with them about the scripture. He was asking them questions. He was interacting with them at a highly intellectual and doctrinal level. And the people who saw him marveled and said, what is this? Where did this young child get so much knowledge of scriptures? That was at age 12. At age 30, he was released into ministry. And he went out and got 12 other disciples. They were all young like him. In fact, the youngest of them, we are told, is John the Beloved, the one who wrote the book of Revelations. This young lad was probably in his late teens, like my two lovely young people that came up here a moment ago. They were young. He was young. Probably his late teens or at the very oldest, his early 20s. This Easter day, I want to challenge every young person, every child, every teenager, every young adult. It's time for you to step up and turn the world the right side up the same way that these young disciples of Jesus Christ took the gospel and took it to the ends of the earth, and here we are today. You are not too young. You are not too young to begin to apply your time and your energy and your effort to these things that are of eternal value. Even as you pursue your career, you pursue your business, you pursue your dreams, pursue Jesus as well, like these young men and women we read about, the same way they pursued Jesus. Youth is the best time to start serving God. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1 says, Remember now your creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come and the years draw nigh when you say, I have no pleasure in them. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. The younger you start, the longer you will serve and the length will compound your power and blessing. It's like you put your money in, in any kind of investment or any kind of savings. The longer it is in that savings or investment, the more your return will be, your return on investment, because it, co it continues to compound. It compounds, and it grows faster when it's compounding. And that's why you are supposed to start saving early. If you start saving when you are a teenager, and you just put, continue putting money there, and you continue to do that throughout your, your, your life, I mean, you are putting money aside, maybe in an investment, maybe in a savings account, somewhere. We are told that, I believe they say it's at 8%, am I right, that it, 
It's, it doubles every seven years. I'm not quite sure, but there's an amount of percentage that will make it double every seven years. So if you start saving at age 15, for instance, or age 14, let me make it e easy. Maybe at age 14, you already have um, $200. And you continue, you don't touch that money. It continues to compound. Um, it will be quite a little nest egg for you by the time you are hitting age 70. It's the same when we start serving the Lord young. This young men and women started with Jesus very young. John was late teens or early 20s. And by the time we get to the book of Revelation, he was telling us deep, profound things that God was revealing to him about the end and eternity. Power and blessings had been compounded through the years. Young, turn the world the right side up. On the first day of the week, Mary came to the tomb while it was dark. And when she saw the stone had been rolled away, she ran to take the news to the others. Very early, start serving God early. What are the characteristics of young people? It is zeal. Young people can be zealous about what they believe in. They have passion. Sometimes that passion can be on, on, on fetter, that it gets them in trouble. Because sometimes they get passionate about things that they have no business getting passionate with, about. But being passionate is, is, can be a positive thing because it, it produces energy. Another thing with young people is the impatience. And that is why you need somebody older who will calm you down from time to time. That's why we have mentors. And there's something about the youth, the youthful person. They are adventurous. They are not afraid to try something new. They are, not, they are not inhibited like older people. They don't have as much to lose as the older people have. So they take risks. They take chances. However, they are also warned in 2 Timothy 2.22 that flee all youthful lusts. I told you sometimes they are passionate about things that you shouldn't be passionate about. 2 Timothy 2, verse 22. Here is Paul talking to Timothy. Timothy 2 was a young adult. He said to Timothy, flee youthful lusts. Your hormones are kicking. There are so many things that you want to do. Your body is telling you do this. But the Bible says you must flee youthful lusts. But pursue righteousness. Pursue faith. Pursue love. Pursue peace. Because of the passion you have, because of your youthfulness, because of the energy, because of your sense of adventure, you want to experiment with many things, many things. You are experimenting with physical, different physical relationships of all shapes and of all, of all colors. No, the Bible says flee them. You are experimenting with all kinds of intoxicants. People are offering you hard drugs, um, all, all kinds of things. The Bible says, no, don't. Don't go into those things. He said, instead, pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace. Your zeal, your passion, your energy, they are all positive things. But channel them to righteousness. That's what the word of God says. I want us to check the numbers. Let's check the numbers. And when I say check the numbers, let's look at the young people who started early serving God. As I said earlier, the disciples of Jesus were young. They were very young. Peter and I believe Andrew were with their father, fishing. 
when Jesus called them. They were still under the authority of their father when Jesus called them. A lot of them were that young. Some of them were still probably living in there with their parents. So I want you to understand that the people that first carried this gospel with Jesus were very young people. They were older people. They weren't mommies and daddies and grandparents. They were young people like you, all of you young people listening to me. And any time God wanted to do something big, he would pick young people. He picked Daniel. Daniel was young. He was a teenager. He picked Joseph. Joseph was young. He was a teenager. David was a teenager. Esther was a teenager. Mary was probably was a teenager, young. Don't be left out. Don't think that serving God or being a Christian is for older people who don't have anything to do. It's for you. It's for you. When God wants to do something big in your life, you start, you start working with him early. On resurrection morning, we see the speed of the youthful. If it had been a grandmother went to the tomb of Jesus that morning, she, would not, she might have wanted to run, but she might not be able to run. Can you imagine? <laughs> that reminds me of a story. A couple years ago, we had, um, we, we had um, um, a pastor's meeting, a minister's meeting somewhere. And so we all gathered and they said, okay, we are going to now have a race. So some of the pastors gathered and we were going to run. And I just looked at them. I said, hmm, I'm going to, I'm going to leave all these um, old men and women behind. Um, and so when they said... Um, Get on your knees and go. I shot out. I, I started running. Oh, believe me, I didn't even take 10 steps before I crumbled on the floor. And all the people I thought I was going to outrun, <laughs> they got to the finished mark before me. I couldn't even pick myself up. That was a couple of years ago. And when I was younger, I used to run. I could run. What am I saying to us? And before I finish that story, pride always comes before a fall. I learned a lesson that day. I ate my humble pie, brushed my, the dust off me, and quietly, soberly went to sit down somewhere. The people who first went to the tomb that day were young people. When Mary Magdalene got there, she ran. She went to call the other disciples. John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And she said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. When Peter went out, and they were going towards the tomb, Peter and the other disciple, and we know it's John the Beloved, both of them were running together. Peter and John the Beloved were running together. Now, Peter was much older than John the Beloved. John the Beloved, I told you, was the youngest of them. The Bible says that John outran Peter and got to the tomb first. He outran Peter and got to the tomb first. We need your speed. Young people, God needs your speed. We see the speed of the youthful. They ran to the tomb to check things out. And when they got there, even though John got there before Peter, the Bible says when he got there, and I want you to look at the timing, John stooped to look in. He saw the linen clothes lying there, but he did not go in. So he got there in enough time to check things out. 
Then, after he had finished checking, the Bible says he peeped in, he saw that everything, he saw the linen clothes. He did not go in, he, he waited outside. Until Simon Peter came. Hey, my brothers and sisters, there's order in the house of God. John, the youngest, got there first. But he did not go in. He looked, he peeped, he saw what was going on. But he did not go in. He deferred to Peter who was older and who was the leader of the disciples. And there must have been a time lapse. The speed of youth. Ah, my prayer and what my heart desires is that every young person listening to me will begin to run with this gospel. And they will get there ahead of us. We older people, and when we get there, we will look at what they are doing and we will say to them, yes, do it this way, do it this way, do it this way, do it this way. I want you to begin to run. Don't wait. And Peter got there and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen clothes there. He saw the face cloth. He saw everything folded up. Then the other disciple, the one who got there first, now went in after Peter. He now went in after Peter. Run. Run with the good news. Run with the gospel. Run with this saving gospel of the resurrected Christ Jesus. Because he rose, everyone who puts faith in him is guaranteed to rise up from the dead. In essence, you put your trust in Jesus. You surrender your life to Jesus. You repent of your sin. You won't die. The Bible says you will sleep. And one day, you will rise up and be with the Lord. Other people may die, but those who believe in Jesus, they sleep. They may sleep for a long time. But when they wake up, they wake up on the side of eternal life. God always commits great responsibility to available youth. If you make yourself available as a young person, God will commit great responsibility to you. When Jesus was hanging there on the cross, what did he do? The Bible tells us in John 19 that he looked and he saw John, that youngest disciple, standing next to his mother Mary. And he said to Mary, Mary, this is your son. Behold your son. Woman, behold your son. And then he turned to the disciple and he said, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the Bible says, that disciple took Mary to his own home. Can you imagine? Who did Jesus commit the responsibility of looking after Mary, his mother, to? It was to John, the disciple, John the beloved. The Lord is looking for young boys and girls, young men and women, who will run with the message of the kingdom. The young people are not afraid to overturn the status quo. That's why God calls them. Young people are not afraid. As I said earlier, they are adventurous. They take risks. They are not thinking of, hmm, if I lose my job, how will I pay my child's school fees? They are not concerned about that. They are still young. They only think, they only, they only, they only, they only thinking about themselves. And that is why they can do so much more. They also don't have the kind of baggage that we older people have. It's like your old computer. 
It has a lot of information on it. Somebody was requesting for something a few days ago from, from us. And there was a time that our, our, our drive crashed a couple years back. Why? Because we had so much information on it. And you know, when you use your computer, when it has a lot of information on it, a lot of documents, a lot of programs, it begins to slow down. It begins to slow down. And when you are putting things in and you are expecting it to give you back results, it's taking longer and longer and longer. That old computer represents an older person. Older people have so much information, so much knowledge, so much of life's experience. And that's why sometimes you think, oh, they are taking too long to make a decision. No. <laughs> they are processing. They are processing so many things. But you know the young, it's like you go to the Apple store, you get a brand new um, Apple or your iPhone. It's just going like that. That's how the younger. It's very fast. It's giving you the information you need quick, 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 quick. Because it doesn't have a lot stored up in its memory yet. Young people. Understand. That it's not that the older people don't know what they are doing. It's that they have much more knowledge than you. And so when they are looking at something, they are looking at it from so many different angles. Takes me back to the resurrection morning. The disciples were young. Jesus needed this message to go out quickly. He knew that if he entrusted it to the older people, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, those people who were already made, it will take a while. But look at from the resurrection day to Acts chapter 17, the Bible says that these people have turned the world upside down. God is calling us at a time like this to turn the world up right side up. There's so much that is going on. Jesus died to make us right. Jesus died to save our souls, to deliver us from our sins and from all the problems that sin brings. Sin brings sickness. Sin brings death. Sin brings destruction. Sin brings oppression. Sin brings affliction. Sin brings infirmity. Look around the world. See oppression. Governments oppressing people. People in power oppressing people. People trying to seize power from other people. Sometimes they do it under the guise of being Christian. Sometimes behaving as worse as the people we call Islamic fundamentalists, terrorists. Hijacking things from people. These things cannot be legislated away. In the days of Jesus, it was, the Roman Empire was not able to legislate on this. It was a transformation of the heart of people through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus. That changed the world. That turned the world upside down. They said the world was being turned upside down. Actually, the world was being turned the right side up. And that is what God is calling us to do now. Whether you are young or whether you are old. It is time to take this gospel that Jesus died and rose from the grave for. A triumphant Christ. And we, by his grace, are triumphant too. As we put our faith in him, as we believe in him, as we look up to him, as we allow his resurrection power into our life, as we run with this gospel of Jesus, his glory will be released. His power will be released. His miracles will be released. Healing will be released. We will be healed. Our families will be healed. Our churches will be healed. Our nations will be healed. The healing power of God will begin to flow. The resurrection power of God will begin to flow. Signs and wonders will begin to happen. 
When this man received the gospel of Jesus, when Jesus rose from the dead on resurrection morning, when he appeared to them over and over and over again. In John 21, I believe, it, we are told he appeared in the midst of them after resurrection. He breathed on them. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. And these men went out. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, uh, Acts 1 verse 8 says, Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come. And the Holy Ghost came. And this man went throughout the world as it was then, performing miracles, rescuing people from hell, bringing people to the saving knowledge of Jesus. They were performing miracles. They were raising the dead. They were healing the sick. They were casting out devils. They were doing wonderful things. They were turning the world upside down by shaking out the works of the devil from the life of people. God is calling us to another season of revival, to another season of outpouring, to another season of his visitation. God is calling us and he's calling everyone. You young people, it's time for you to stand up. It's time for you to arise. It's time for you to run like John the beloved run. It's time for you to outrun the older people. And for the older people, it's time for us to stand. It's time for us to run like we have never run before. To gather strength and defy the old age and say, I'm going to do more than I have ever done before. The work of the gospel. The king's business, it requires haste because it is time for us to turn our world the right side up. Jesus, on the day of resurrection, said, I am ascending to my father and to your father, to my God, and your God. And he said, have you believed because you see me speaking to Thomas? He said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Every one of you listening to me today, you are blessed. You are blessed. I am blessed. Jesus said it here. He said, you have not seen me, but you believe. That is an automatic blessing. That blessing is going to work in our lives. That blessing is going to take us higher. That blessing is going to take us to the ends of the world. That blessing is going to do wonders in our life. That blessing is going to secure the kingdom for the resurrected Christ. A very happy Easter to all of you once more. It's a day of celebration. It's a day of joy. It's the day when, again, we are authenticated as children of the Most High God. Because he lives, you will live also. Because he died, you will be made whole. Because he suffered for you, you will be set free. Amen. Whatever it may be that the devil thought he had done with your life, Jesus is here. And as you allow him, the devil thinks he's turning his world, the world of the devil upside down, for he's turning your world the right side up. If you will rise up wherever you are, let us just talk to the Lord right now. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you are in terms of your relationship with God, in terms of your faith with Christ. But there's resurrection power here today. That resurrection power is flowing through the airways right now. The power that heals, the power that delivers, the power that sets free, the power that makes things right, the power that turns things the right side up. 
the power that overcame the devil, the victorious resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ is working right now. It's working right now. It's working in that part of your body that they said is dead. Ha! The resurrection power is working in you right now. The resurrection power that took Jesus Christ out of the grave. And the grave could not hold him. The resurrection power that lifted him above all the problems here on earth. And took him into the presence of the almighty God. I ascend to my father and your father. To my God and your God. That's what he said. <laughs> that resurrection power. That lifts you up to the presence of the almighty God. Is here right now. Lifting you above all principalities and all powers. And all the works that the devil has done. The grave could not hold Jesus. Hell could not hold Jesus. Ha! Huh. The grave cannot hold you. The grave of poverty, the grave of sickness and disease cannot hold you. The grave of failure cannot hold you. The grave of unrighteousness can no longer hold you. The resurrection power of Christ is transporting you into a life of righteousness and purity. Ha! He rose. He rose. He rose from the dead. You rise from the deadness of your sin. In the name of Jesus. You are under the sound of my voice. You want to give your life to Jesus? You are tired of the life you are living. A life that is going nowhere. A life that is as good as the dead. You yourself know. Inside of you. Your heart is heavy and you feel dead. Dead in sin. Dead in unrighteousness. The resurrection power of Jesus is here now. As it enters into you. It will turn your life the right side up. Do you want to surrender your life to Jesus? Do you want to repent of your sin? That's what Easter is about. You cannot continue to live like a dead person. Walking in the company of the dead. Walking with sinners. It's not what God created you for. That's why Jesus died. For your sin. That's why he went into hell. Took the punishment for your sin. That's why he took his blood and ascended to heaven and presented the blood of his sacrifice to the Father and said to the Father, I have paid the price for their redemption. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sin cannot hold you anymore. Are you praying to the Lord? Are you saying to him, Lord, I repent of my sins? I repent of my sin, Jesus, I repent. I confess my sins, oh God. I know, Lord Jesus, you died for me. And on, on, on resurrection day, on Easter day, you rose from the dead. You took that blood and you presented it to the Father. And said, I died for Fumi. Here is the blood I shed for Fumi. Put your name there. Here is the blood you shed I shed for John. Here is the blood I shed for Jane. Here is the blood I shed. Here is the blood I shed. And as he presented that blood to the Father, the Father said, no more judgment against this one. Ha! No more judgment against those who accept Jesus. And God said, for me, go free. The price has been paid for your sin. Put your name there. And as God set me free from my sin, he set me free from sickness. He set me free from disease. He set me free from the oppression of the devil. He set me free from the affliction of the wicked. He set me free and I am free. Are you free? I want to pray for you. 
Jesus is working in your life right now. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus, just stretch your hand towards that screen as I want to pray for you. Say, Lord, this Easter day, I'm tired of my life of sin. I confess my sin to you, Jesus. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for my drunkenness. Forgive me for my addiction. Forgive me for my lewdness. Forgive me for my immorality. Forgive me for my lying, my cheating, my stealing, my wickedness, my anger, my unforgiveness, my bitterness. Forgive me, Lord, for the murders I have committed. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I surrender. I know you died for me. I know you died for me. I surrender my life, Jesus. I want you to come into my heart and become my Lord and my Savior. And as you enter into my heart, Lord, give me your peace. Give me your joy. Give me the victory over death and the grave. Let your resurrection power come into me now, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You say that if I come to you, you will not cast me. Did you pray that prayer? I want to pray for you. Make sure you text salvation or save to that number coming up on your screen. As I pray for you. Text salvation or save. So that somebody can reach out to you and I can continue to pray for you. You are about to step into a new life. A life of purity and righteousness. A life of victory in Christ Jesus. I'm praying for you. Father, I thank you Lord. For that person who is confessing their sins and accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I ask, Lord, that you will forgive their sin. On this Easter Sunday, Lord God, that you will make them your own. You will give them a certificate of birth into eternal life. You will write their name in your register of life in heaven. Give them your peace and your joy. Make them a totally new creature. Let sin have no more power over them. Father, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Congratulations if you pray that prayer. The Word is already working in you. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more messages and information about the church, please visit us at www.rccglivingspring.org.